The true drivers of our economic future will be farmers, small and medium-sized manufacturers and agro-allied businesses. Indeed, the words of Nigeria's President Muhammad Buhari at the presentation of the 2017 budget aptly tagged budget of recovery and growth before the National Assembly in December 2016 are those of a man who understands the immediate needs of Nigeria, especially at a time when the country requires effective programs and policies to pull it out of economic recession. With the successes recorded so far in growing agriculture to improve food security, conserve foreign reserves and grow the national economy, Nigeria may just be taking the needed turn after many decades of neglecting agriculture, a sector on which 70% of the population still depends for their livelihood. Over the years, a handful of Nigerians have led by example by consistently demonstrating an undying passion for large-scale agriculture and food production despite government neglect of the sector. One of these efforts has resulted in what is today the foremost dairy brand in Nigeria. This week on Farmer's Market, we will be exploring Nagari Integrated Dairy Farms, one of Africa's largest single integrated dairy farms, and of course, we will be looking at its prime products. Farmer's Market promotes Nigeria's agricultural prowess, identifies the challenges besetting the sector, and advocates policies and programs that will help grow Nigeria's agro-economy. Welcome to Kefi, the headquarters of Kefi Local Government Area of Nasarawa State, North Central Nigeria. A sprawling township, home to over 92,000 people according to the 2006 population census. Kefi is also home to one of the largest integrated dairy farms on the African continent, Nagari Integrated Dairy Farms. Nagari Integrated Dairy Farms is a trailblazer and a market leader in livestock and dairy production in Nigeria. A visit to the Nagari Ranch, which also houses its state-of-the-art dairy production facilities, quickly confirms this. Located on a large ranch covering all of 1,200 hectares of land in the Gota area of Kefi, Nagari Integrated Dairy Farm is home to over a thousand cattle, producing the highest quality of yogurt, fresh milk, and cheese. When Canadian athlete and former 100 meters world record holder Donovan Bailey said, Follow your passion, be prepared to work hard and sacrifice, and above all, don't let anyone limit your dreams. He must have learned from great people like the man whose passion for agriculture gave birth to Nagari Integrated Dairy Farms. A well-known Nigerian politician, a two-term governor of Nasarawa State and a sitting senator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria representing Nasarawa West Senatorial District, Alhaji Abdullahi Adamu, an engineer, a lawyer, a man of many parts, but Senator Abdullahi Adamu's real passion is agriculture. You can go as many steps as you want backwards. You'll find that farming, agriculture, is the main calling of my, you know, family tree. Um, from my great-great-grandfathers to date, they may be involved with the traditional rulership, yes, but fundamentally they are a farming, you know, um, families. You know, um, I drive 
the interest I have from that background. I have been involved with agriculture, farm, my own farm, since about the year 1982 that I, I really started having a farm that I call my own farm. 36 years of crop production have no doubt turned Senator Adamu into a lover of agriculture and a consummate farmer. But his venture into livestock production started in 1992. I was attracted to it by a, an in-law of mine. He had some link with uh, UNESCO. He said that if um, I could have 50 he heifers, meaning female cows, on, on my farm that I might raise, uh, they were going to provide certain assistance. I was attracted to it. So on any of the market days in any of these neighboring villages of what used to be Kefi, local government, I would go there either personally or send somebody with some money to buy some cows for me. And when I was buying, I just was buying heifers, heifers, few ones. And uh, before I knew what was happening by about 1990, but towards the end of 1993, I had 100, 100 solid, number 100 heifers in my farm. Then I decided to buy some bulls for purpose of mating. All this while, Senator Adamu was just rearing cattle, mainly local cattle. The thought of value addition was still far from his mind. By about 1999, as I was coming into government, I had a herd of no less than a thousand cows, bulls and heifers. Then I became governor, and my attention on the farm was beginning to, to, to diminish. But somehow a good friend of mine heard about my interest in livestock. And uh, he decided to visit. We play with you know, my friend, but uh, like playmates. And he came to me shouting, What the hell are you doing with cattle? I hear you are into cattle. And this. We're joking about it in my office. And I was wondering, Yes, I'm interested in cattle, and I have cattle. And I said to him, There is no full any man around me who has the number of cattle I have, because of our jokes. And uh, he said, But this is what you are doing. What do you get out of it? 1,000, 1,000 plus cows, what do they give you? And I found you were asking, you were asking me very, very interesting questions. And I knew it, go, it had gone beyond joking. So I told him what I do, and, and they said to me, you're just wasting your time and wasting your money. What you should do is to get, you know, uh, this improved breed of cattle, you know, and uh, see if you can produce enough milk, and then add value to it, and produce yogurt or whatever. And he had money, he told me. He's doing it himself, he told me. So I was attracted to that, and uh, I said, how do I do it? He came to see me, i never forget, himself, and Mary Yako, and Dr. Shetima Mustafa, and then the President Minister of Agriculture, Chief Hadobe, came to me here in Kefi, and we discussed in details, I mean, at length, what to do. So I gave them the consultancy, I said, please, consult for the farm. Said, how do I get into this? How do, I, how do I get the cows? How do I get them in? And how do I set up, you know, the infrastructure for a dairy farm? Those posers were answered diligently and effectively too with the importation of improved cattle breeds like the Holstein Frisian from Europe and South Africa, which could produce much more milk than the local breeds. There is little or no comparison in reality. In practical terms, the average heifer uh, fresh and hosted average should be able to give you in an ideal condition something in the region of 35, 30, 35 liters. The best of them will give you anything, a little over 40. I've been to farms in Europe that a cattle, a cow, a heifer can give you up to 50 liters a day. Now, the best you can ever get with our cattle is probably about one liter, one and a half liter. If you see one that is two liters, bring it to me, I'll buy it. 
for, from you. It's as bad as that. The difference is so big. I think a lot of these uh, advantages happen to have genetical origins. Um, they develop their cattle. We've had cattle, God knows for how long. Till tomorrow they call you white fulani or they tell you sakoto gudale or they tell you whatever. But up till today, our research has not been able to give you something you say, this is all Nigeria, this is what you can do to compute any of this we're talking about. Take South Africa. You see some of the brown bulls you see here and some heifers, brown. We call them uh, Bons Mara. Bons Mara is the name of a professor of veterinary science in South Africa. He picked any of the species and developed one that was for Africa. These were animals that could eat anything and live on anything. And they were bigger than any of our own. And of course, getting the exotic breed of cattle to survive and be productive in a foreign land with a hot and harsh weather like Nigeria's was another challenge altogether. We try to fine tune the environment, thereby mimicking the temperate environment over there. You see, we planted trees around to make their body cool. And also we put in place some farms that, you know, during heat period, it also generates uh, uh, cold to, to them. So we've been able to achieve this by mimicking or fine-tuning the natural environment here and they've been surviving. The farm had become very successful at the production of raw milk, producing much more than it knew what to do with. We got to a point in this farm where we're doing about 3,000 liters of milk per day. One pitiful story is at a point in time because the processing was not meeting, meeting the, the, the supply of raw material. So we're doing two things. We were, we were packaging and then we were also selling to end users. So this was part of the outlets for the milk, fresh milk and then what we could process were processing. Otherwise, at some point, we produce the milk because if a cow is ready, if a heifer is ready for milk and you don't milk her, the, 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 she gets very heavy and it's painful. So you have to milk her when she's due for milking. And then on lie here at some point we have to get some local full line women to carry milk from us to go and sell. Sometimes we have to throw the milk away and flush and pay to the place to be cleaned up. It was that, that bad. But Alhamdulillah, we went beyond that point. We stabilized and then we grew to what we now are. And that is this state-of-the-art, fully automated yogurt production facility. A one-of-a-kind yogurt production plant which processes raw milk from this tank into this attractive market-leading brand without human interference. Nagari Integrated Dairy Farms has over a thousand cattle of different breeds and to ensure that the herd is healthy and productive enough to feed the dairy plant with raw milk, the company has invested massively in research. The company has also devised ingenious means to ensure that the herd is nourished with the diet it requires to be productive. You, your nutrition has to be right. And there is what we call maintenance ration and production ration. So, um, and also some supplement feeds to these animals. That is where you, I mentioned about salt lake the other time. Salt lake is just has to pre uh, produce, you know, uh, minerals, essential minerals for the animals. Once you get this uh, production ration right, and uh, you have your protein ration right, then the multiplication or the breeding process will be easier. We actually reconstitute our own concentrates. So what we do is um, some parts of the input, like the maize you spoke about, we grow here on the farm. So we don't buy everything that we feed them. But we do have um, some suppliers um, locally. Um, some of their feeding, some inputs we have to import, unfortunately. 
but um, the ones that we do get locally, we have a fairly, um, we have a good agreement with our suppliers um, in that because of the volume that we get from them, we're able to get some competitive um, pricing. This is the beginning of the actual dairy production process, the milking clutches. The tanks and the entire milking pallor are thoroughly cleaned. The cows are then led into the pallor, fitted with the clutches. The milk is extracted and transferred into the highly sanitized production plant where it is stored in the raw milk tank in readiness for processing. The milk comes from the order of the animal not less than 37 degrees. And if we are to allow it at that temperature of 37 degrees, it will take less than 20 to 30 minutes before it gets spoiled. Because milk is something that can easily be denatured by heat. In respect to that, we have to bring the temperature to 4 degrees. That is the storage temperature. Of which, after it been passed through this, now it will now bring the temperature to 4 degrees directly into the storage tank. As it gets into the storage tank, the milk can remain in that storage tank for a period of five to six days, depending when we want to process it. It's a foolproof process which ensures that the end product maintains its health and safety records. Even then, a team of highly trained and qualified dairy production experts meticulously carries out every necessary check during production. There are a series of tests that have to be carried out. We have to check the total plate count, check the, the coliform count, the mud, the yeast, and all this bacteriological analysis. Then from there, we come to the biochemical analysis, where we now take about the pH, the acidity, the rest, and the bricks, and all the rest before processing will take place. Once the milk is fermented, it is ready for packing. Again, this process is automated and done in enclosed machines to eliminate the threat of contamination. The packs are loaded flat into the packing machine. The machine turns them into these containers, fills them with a nagari high quality yogurt. It also corks them automatically before releasing them. And this is the only time that there is human contact with the yogurt when they are safely sealed. Even after this, the finished product is again tested, as they say, just to make assurances doubly sure. Nagari Farm yogurt is only ready for the market after these final tests. It's a fresh yogurt. It's, um, we use fresh cow milk in production. It's not the regular UHT um, ultra high temperature yogurt that you see all over the market. Um, it's, it, it has a live bacteria. It's a very delicate product. Um, it has to be maintained at a certain temperature from production to storage to distribution. And it's, it's something that we're very passionate about. It's something that um, you've been in the factory. Every little detail, every little input into the product is very well um, paid attention to. And um, this is something that we've maintained year in, year out. And um, it's just a fantastic product and a lot of work, a lot of passion, a lot of hard work goes into it. The ever-growing consumer base of Nagari Farm yogurt across the country must also share this passion, as only this can explain the ever-increasing demand for the product. Oh, fantastic. Everywhere people talk about it. We have distributors all over the nation and um, meeting the demand sometimes is um, hard, but the demand is very high in the market. A unique feature of Nagari yogurt is its packaging. It is nothing like any other local brand. Uh, the packaging is unique in itself. You can't find it anywhere. Then the product itself, the issue having to do with yogurt has to do with you are following the uh, standard. 
you know, worldwide, which is not to have too much sugar in it. So we have our product following the normal standard. We don't have too much sugar in the product. That's one of our basically, I mean, basically some of our selling points. The producers, marketers, and indeed the consumers of Nagari Farm yogurt are emphatic that it is unrivaled. Every single time you pick up a, a piece of Nagari yogurt, you know exactly what you're going to get. We do not relent. We do not cut corners. It is what we do. We pride ourselves in giving our customers the best always. Nagari yogurt is the best yogurt in anybody's shelf today. Any supermarket, from Lagos to Bama to Lake Chad, from to Sokoto to Akwaibom, if you go there, you, there's no milk imported yogurt, whether it's imported or produced in Nigeria, that is better than Nagari yogurt. This is not my own testimony. The testimony from the market. It's testimony from our various institutions, from NAVDAC, from, uh, from um, quality control, you know, agencies of government. Standard, what they call it, uh, Standard Organization of Nigeria. We have had prizes to this effect. And nobody's beating us. Echoes. One of the uh, they invite us here to, 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 to introduce. In fact, there's one coming up sometimes in December. You know, we have been invited to have a, a pavilion. This is the yogurt. And that's why you have the Nigerian flag on it. Despite this resounding success, there are challenges. Challenges of the near absence of research to improve livestock breeds in Nigeria. And of course, those associated with a difficult operating environment for manufacturers. So what we do every time we have a production is we have to run a generator, whether there's electricity or not, because we're not sure if it's going to stay all through. The same thing as well, to store the product, we have to run generators because in the middle of the night, for example, if the light goes out, then you're, you're, you're stuck with the possibility of losing whatever you have in your cold store the following day. Again, infrastructure, delivering the products, the road network in most of the places where we supply our products to is not as good as it is probably from driving from Kefi to Abuja, for example. We have to get these products to the end users however, whatever means necessary. And so we always have to deal with breakdowns in our trucks, tires getting pulled out in the middle of the road, things like that. I believe that um, uh, as a manufacturer, those are probably our biggest problems. We need to do a little more research. We need to coordinate the research better than we're doing today. We need the results of this research to be applicable to the demands or the, the, the requirements of the agricultural sector of the economy so that we can go and boost in production. You cannot talk of improving the lot, what you get from, from, from cattle or from chicken without really going down to research as to problems, what are existing problems, how do we overcome them, how do we improve the value of our livestock. How do we do it? If you're looking for milk, how do we get our cattle to produce more milk? What's going to quality of this milk? Not just the quantity, the quality of the milk. All right? Is there anything government can do to introduce some level of subsidy among those who are into it so it can induce greater interest? The farm you see now, I've said it, the only time you see anybody government here is when they are coming for tax. Since the, the privatization of uh, what they call the, the NEPA, I get a bill of more than a million in a, in a, in a month for, for NEPA. And it's not there. And when NEPA, what do you call them, NEPA, whichever, whichever company is now operating this part of her, even they are full blast, we cannot operate our machines with, the, with what they, that they supply. End of the month, you have a bill of over one million. For what consumption? Now, these are things that break us down. But you say it and, uh, you know. Fortunately, we have a government that is now ready to listen to this. And uh, we'll see in what ways, you know, some circle will come by way of, you know, to, to assist Nigerian farmers. Because I know this government 
I've spoken to the president myself, not once, not twice. I believe what he told me. And I know he's serious about it. And he will change the fortunes of agriculture in this country for the better. That's Farmers Market for this week. You can join the conversation or watch this program and other editions of Farmers Markets whenever you want to. Just go to our website www.farmersmarketng.com For feedback and sponsorship considerations, please contact us on 0809-566-0090 Email us on Info at farmersmarketng.com. Follow us on Twitter at farmersmarketng and like our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash farmersmarketng. Farmers Market returns same time, same station next week.